Have you ever wondered how political opportunism can impact the most innocent among us, our school children? Picture this, a week-long event called Palestine Solidarity Week, organized by the Ministry of Education in Malaysia, an event designed to instill empathy and support for the issues of Palestine. But here's where things take a turn. Educators, in an attempt to illustrate the conflict, brandished toy guns at school children. The result? Public outrage. This isn't a simple case of good intentions gone wrong. It's a glaring example of how political opportunism can seep into our education system, turning a platform for learning into a stage for political posturing. The intention might have been to teach empathy, but the execution was fraught with controversy and criticism. The children, who should have been shielded from the brutal realities of war, were instead exposed to a simulation of violence. The repercussions of such exposure are yet to be fully understood, but the immediate backlash was swift and severe. It's a stark reminder of the unforeseen consequences of political opportunism. In the ambitious endeavor to shape young minds, have we crossed a line? The public outcry was swift and severe, but what were the real consequences of this incident? The backlash was more than just a slap on the wrist for Education Minister Fadlina Sadek and Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. Criticisms poured in from all corners, and calls for their resignations echoed through the halls of power. Fadlina, who had once been lauded for her progressive ideas, found herself in the eye of a storm. She had to justify a decision that had been seen as a grave misstep, a move that had thrust children into the throes of a conflict they were too young to comprehend. And then there was Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, who was accused of using the Israel-Hamas war as a smokescreen, a diversion from the country's economic crisis that continued to worsen under his watch. The ringgit was at its lowest point in history, and the cost of living was spiraling out of control. As the dust settled, it became clear that this incident was more than just a controversy. It was a stark reminder of how political opportunism and hypocrisy can overshadow the real issues that a country grapples with, and how the innocent can be caught in the crossfire. In the face of political crisis do we lose sight of the real issues at hand. But what about the children caught in the crossfire of this political maelstrom? The ripple effects of the political opportunism we've been discussing do not stop at public outrage and political backlash. They reach far deeper, impacting our most vulnerable, our children. Imagine being seven years old, and instead of learning about friendship, empathy, and creativity, you're being shown toy guns and taught about conflict. This isn't just an education issue. It's a matter of child development, of molding young minds in an environment that should be promoting growth, not division. The images of violence and conflict, even when they are symbolic, can have profound effects on young minds. Children are impressionable and their understanding of the world is shaped by what they see and hear. Exposing them to violence at such a tender age can lead to a warped perception of the world, where conflict is normalized and peace is an exception, not the rule. So, what's the alternative? How can we ensure our children grow up in a nurturing, positive environment, even when the world outside is anything but? The answer lies in policy. Policymakers have a responsibility to keep politics, guns, and violence out of schools. They should be promoting an education that teaches coexistence, compassion, and understanding. Imagine if that same week dedicated to Palestine solidarity was instead used to educate children about different cultures, religions, and ways of life, about how, despite our differences, we can live together in harmony. That's not to say we should shy away from teaching children about international politics and conflicts, but it's about the manner in which we do it, with sensitivity, with respect for young minds, and with a focus on peace, not division. We need to remember, these children are not just students, they're the future leaders, thinkers, and creators of our world. The values we instill in them now will shape the world we live in tomorrow. When it comes to shaping the minds of our future generation, we need to ask ourselves, are we doing more harm than good? Thank you.